if you take any country in Africa, for sure they have people like myself who are lucky to be in the West and did get their training in the West. I believe these uh, professionals should, should try to come back to their birth countries and make sure that they take part in the progress that that particular country is making. That's an amazing story, Dr. Shire. Prior to the opening of your forensic science laboratory, were you processing DNA? When the uh, Bureau's uh, laboratory, particularly the forensic biology section began in 2017, it was the first of its kind in Somalia. So that tells you before that time, unfortunately there wasn't any DNA testing facility in Somalia. But from 2017, that is when it began, at least in that part of Somalia. But even when it did begin, it wasn't really fully functional right away. So we had to move gradually along the years to make sure that we acquire the necessary tools up until we eventually become fully capable of doing DNA testing sometime around February of 2020. And in fact, even to this day, the laboratory of the Bureau of Forensic Science in Gero, Somalia, is the only one so far in Somalia that has DNA capability testing. What is the public view on DNA and DNA databases in the criminal justice system in Somalia? The public are accepting the results that are coming from our, our laboratory. The uh, acceptance really is, is, is fantastic and it's really changing the justice system in Somalia. The, the Bureau of Forensic Sciences was set up through a combination of donor funding and government commitment. Is this something that could be emulated in other administrations? So if we make sure that we you know, recruit the right people and if we have the government commitment and if there's also ownership in the government, as well as having people like myself who are trained in the field and determined to make sure that this endeavor is working, I think that is something we can replicate in other parts of Africa. In short, to be successful, we definitely need commitment from the government as well as continuous funding. The potential effect of DNA in any criminal justice system is what the law allows you to do with it. The Bureau of Forensic Sciences was in a way instigated by the promulgation of the laws in Somalia. Mm -hmm. Does this allow you to retain your DNA profiles on a DNA database? Is it a DNA law or are you utilizing it just to process or analyze DNA samples? We do our DNA testing. When we complete the, the work basically, we prepare the report and the report goes to the CID as well as the Office of the Attorney General. But we have those uh, DNA samples in our, in, our, in our laboratory. We have the results of the DNA profile. So in a way that is like in the DNA database that we have it. But unfortunately, there's no any law that is now dealing about what we need to do with that database. In fact, there's a discussion between us and the CID and the Office of Attorney General, and we're trying to see what can we do going forward to see if we can you know, modify the law and then allow us to create the DNA database. So far, the data profiles we have generated for the last maybe year or so, and we shall see going forward what we can come up with in terms of the best way to utilize that and even expand to another level. Well, I must say in South Africa, our DNA laws and the ability to retain profiles on a database has been a game changer in respect mm -hmm. of identifying serial offenders. And I certainly hope that you are able to progress that because mm -hmm. no law has ever been reduced in its scope. It's only been extended once you see the benefits of DNA profiling in a criminal uh, Absolutely. And I'm sure, and I'm sure you know, the audience would appreciate as governments do prepare laws. They do so definitely with good intention, given time. And I think that's where we're heading now, because now we can see the benefit of having a data database in Somalia. I certainly hope that the amazing work that you've already done in Somalia continues. And I sincerely hope that if there is anybody listening to this podcast, come back to Africa. If there is ever a place that needs criminal justice systems to be boisted up and buoyed up by people who are passionate about seeing and seeking changes. I think it's here. And I, and I really hope that your call to action is heard by many because it, it, it really makes so much sense. Thank you for leading the way and may we see you back soon. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.